Hey, today we're going to talk about indicators and we're going to be looking at different examples of indicators and how they change color. We've done a lot with indicators, whether you know it or not. You've seen an indicator. Ladies, if you've taken a pregnancy test, that's an indicator. Um, anytime you get tests for STDs, some of these rapid HIV tests are, they use indicators, um, different types that are testing enzymes or other chemicals in your body. We're going to look at table M right here. We have different types of indicators. <clears throat> the one that I'm going to be using right now is phenolphthalein. And phenolphthalein turns, it goes from a colorless color. So whatever the left number is, that refers to the left color. So these numbers and lower, if you picture this as a number line, these numbers and lower is going to be this color. These numbers and higher is going to be this color. So phenolphthalein actually is starting to change from colorless to pink at around a pH of between 8 and 9. So, who cares about this, right? We're going to blow something up. Water. In fact, this is our equation. One of your practice problems is to balance this equation. Okay, I'm not going to do it for you. But we're going to start with sodium. Remember, we used this in class before. You're going to see it blow up. We're going to add it to water, and you're going to get sodium hydroxide. Remember, sodium hydroxide is an arrhenius base because it has OH as the only negative ion. So by adding the sodium to the water, I should get a base. I'm going to add phenolphthalein, which since it's regular tap water, this is colorless. Do you notice? Colorless solution. I can add as much as I want, doesn't matter, it's not going to change. I could even take the cap off of this and pour it in there. See that? Nothing changes because the pH is below a pH of 8. I don't want to blow anything up. So, are we ready? Now, there is phenolphthalein in here. This is sodium. I've already cut, I've already cut it up drying it off. Uh, as you recall, sodium is a metal. If you look right here, you can see that the sodium is a little bit, um, oh. the sodium has some luster to it. It is malleable, which means I can bend it. It also conducts electricity, but I'm not going to find that out. So I'm going to add the sodium. You're going to make some observations. Do you notice the color change? This is because the sodium is reacting to form sodium hydroxide. Come on, come on. You should see something happening. I would get closer, but I don't want it to blow up on my face. But you'll see that it's changing now. The sodium is reacting with the water to form sodium hydroxide. Hmm, this was gonna blow up. Dang it. Maybe I'll try a little bit more. Right? A little bit more? Alright. Oh, 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 oh! You see that? A little bit of a fire right there. That's why I got the glasses, the apron, the gloves. Now, this is a very violent reaction. Remember, sodium is one of the more active metals if you look on table J. Sodium is going to react with any metal that is below it on the reference on the periodic or the table J. Wow. Whoa! Haha. <laughs> that was fun, right? All right. So you're going to be looking at your practice problems. You're going to tell me. I might. I'm going to give you a pH, and you're going to tell me what color each one of the indicators is in that pH. So for this, we're going to start with pH of four. Tell me. Each one of the indicators, and I've listed the indicators here on the side. Tell me which, what color each one of the indicators is going to be at a pH of four. Peace. 